What is the leading cause of irreversible blindness in the world? Is it myopia, cataracts, diabetes, or macular degeneration? Um, I'm gonna have to go with D, macular degeneration. Hey yo, Antonio. Nothing hurts me more than seeing a patient that has already sustained some serious damage to their eyes, because at that point, there's really not much that can be done, and they have to live with impaired vision for the rest of their life. One disease in particular that is notorious for this is macular degeneration, and it affects about 8.7% of the global population aged between 45 to 85. It's also the leading cause of legal blindness in the world. But if it's such a big problem, then shouldn't more people know about it? So in today's video, I want to talk about what macular degeneration is, how it comes about, and what we can do to stop it from getting worse. At the back of our eyes, we have what is known as the retina. At the very center of it, we have a small spot called the macula. It is where light is focused and is responsible for our central vision. As the name suggests, macular degeneration is when the macula degenerates, mostly from aging, but also from other factors such as our genetics and our lifestyle. It starts off as little yellow spots appearing on the macula, known as drusen, and in severe cases can lead to absolute destruction and blindness. Those that have it will struggle to recognize faces and potentially risk losing their driver's license. To understand this a little bit further, let's take a closer look at the retina itself. We all know that the retina consists of photoreceptors known as rods and cones. But you see, the photoreceptors are like factories that take light information to produce electrical impulses for the brain to interpret. But by doing so, they also create byproducts or pollutants that may accumulate and lead to damage. To counteract this, there is a layer of cells behind it called the retinal pigmented epithelium that acts as a recycling plant to gobble up any garbage that the photoreceptors may produce. In the case of macular degeneration, the RPE cannot do its job properly and the pollution starts piling up. Clinically, this can be seen in the form of drusen overlying the macula and can be easily monitored with an OCT machine. This is what we call macular degeneration, when the accumulation of byproducts that cannot be recycled leads to permanent vision loss. And because it usually comes on with age, we generally call it age-related macular degeneration, or AMD for short. It's important to understand that macular degeneration exists on a spectrum. On one hand, there are mild forms of AMD, whereas on the other, there are more severe cases. When it gets really severe, we call that wet macular degeneration, because at that point, the RPE has sustained so much damage that the blood vessels from the underlying choroid start infiltrating the retina. It's commonly said that about 1% of all macular degeneration is wet macular degeneration. But that 1% is responsible for 99% of all the damage that all macular degeneration will cause. But how do we stop it from getting to that point? With a mountain of scientific literature regarding the cause of macular degeneration, it boils down to this, nutrition and lifestyle. With nutrition, because we know that the macula degenerates as a result of oxidative damage, scientists have studied the most abundant antioxidants found in the macula. They looked to see if consuming more of these through our diet had any significant impact on preventing macular degeneration. It was found that lutein and zeaxanthin, which belong to a family of carotenoids found in green leafy vegetables like spinach, broccoli and kale, had a significant benefit in delaying existing macular degeneration from worsening. The evidence surrounding the prevention of macular degeneration, however, is a little bit more conflicted, 
where a couple studies showed that lutein and zeaxanthin intake reduced the risk of developing AMD, whereas a couple others suggested no such benefit. In 2006, the US FDA had concluded that the evidence around lutein and zeaxanthin from preventing macular degeneration in those that don't have it is not significant enough to meet their SSA standard and should not be recommended to those that are looking to prevent the disease from occurring. In that same year, the National Eye Institute launched the RH2 study that concluded that although lutein and zeaxanthin were not effective in preventing the disease, it did benefit those that already had the disease, wanting to delay the progression into more severe forms. Regardless of your view on these studies, it's still recommended that a healthy diet full of antioxidants commonly found in green leafy vegetables is beneficial in maintaining the health of the eyes. Our diet, however, is not the only cause of AMD. Several other studies have also looked at the relationship between AMD and lifestyle factors such as smoking and body mass index. What scientists have found was that those who smoke and or have a high body mass index showed a significant increase in their risk of developing AMD. Naturally, quitting smoking and regular exercise would be essential in preventing macular degeneration from causing blindness. But what happens if you already have macular degeneration? Is there anything that could be done to cure it? Unfortunately, there is currently no cure for macular degeneration. Our best efforts go towards delaying any further damage. Interestingly enough, the treatment for AMD changes depending on how severe the condition is. For example, if you had mild forms of AMD, the treatment would involve being aware of potential risk factors like smoking and body mass index, maintaining a healthy diet, and having regular eye exams with an eye doctor. Moderate forms would also need to be closely monitored, and changes to our diet and lifestyle is always recommended. The RED study done by the National Eye Institute suggested a formulation containing lutein, zeaxanthin, vitamin C and E, copper and zinc were more effective at slowing down intermediate and late stage AMD than those that had milder forms. So at this point, supplements can now be introduced. Once the macular degeneration enters the severe stage or wet macular degeneration, new blood vessels start forming and fluid accumulates under the macula. This is a terrible sign because the amount of scarring that occurs here is immense and legal blindness is not uncommon. So to counteract this, the treatment usually involves regular injections in the eye known as anti-VEGFs as well as nutritional supplementation to delay it as much as possible. The damage done by macular degeneration is known to be permanent, so it's in everyone's best interest to stop it from happening in the first place. If you have any stories you'd like to share about macular degeneration, then I would love to hear it in the comments below. But that just about wraps it for today's video. I hope you learned something new, or at least found something useful. If you did, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.